Good morning. This is a special edition of Political Paula, and I'm choosing to air it today because many people say my show is a little prophetic sometimes, and so I want to see if it is. Because at 6 p.m. this evening, Donald Trump, our president, is giving a news conference on the coronavirus. And I think I already know what he's going to say. And the problem is we have to choose to decide if we're going to believe him. This is not necessarily a criticism of the president, but it's a criticism of government at whole when we have a situation like what we have right now with the coronavirus. And you know, some of you may not like what I'm going to say. That's normal. But I do want to hear your opinions on this because this is very important and I haven't discussed it much. But I've read a lot of books and most of them were fiction which, thank God, is a good thing. But I've also been quite the uh, studier, you might say, of the AIDS virus and how when it started, it was like no big deal because only gay people were getting it. Only gay men were getting it. And we didn't get ahead of it. We didn't even have a test till over 4,000 people had died in America of the virus. It took a long time to get money to fight AIDS and HIV. And most of our government didn't even mention it. Reagan didn't mention it. Because it wasn't killing enough of the right kind of people. Now, when this coronavirus started, we didn't know about it. It started in a communist country in China. And that's a real problem. And that should tell you something since we are in the middle of this 2020 election and Bernie Sanders probably had two choices when he went on his honeymoon. It was either China, actually three, China, Cuba, or Russia. He chose Russia. But when you think about the fact that Bernie Sanders admires governments like China and Russia and Cuba, and the fact that this virus is so out of control right now, especially in China, it is because we are not being allowed information. We don't know exactly who the first patient was that had this virus. And if that person was allowed to leave China or travel or people that that person was exposed to were allowed to leave China because the Chinese government shut everything down. They turned off the Internet. See, the government can do that in a communist country. If something's going on they don't want the world to know about, they just shut off your internet. No social media. They told all the doctors who were saying, wow, this is getting bad. We got a lot of people infected with this virus and they're dying. They said, don't talk about it. If you talk about it, the doctor who did talk about it went to jail for talking about it. The Chinese government will not let Western news reporters into their country. They won't let CDC officials into the country. So what they're reporting, we have no way to verify if it's even true. For all we know, there could be 20,000 people dead. I hope that's not true, because if it is, this thing is a lot bigger than we ever thought it would be. But the problem is we don't know. And we can't force them, apparently, I don't know why, to let us go in and get some answers for ourselves to actually see what's going on in China. But there's another problem, because when it was in China, well, that was okay, because, you know, all you got to do, and it's easy to do, and it's right to do it, we say no more people who have been in China can come into the United States. If, even if you're Chinese-American, you've been in China, you quarantine yourself, and when we can, you can prove you are 100% healthy, you can come back to America. That's easy. Then we had those cruise ships, 57 people screaming from the top of their lungs because they were bored. They had nothing better to do for their quarantine period than go to the media screaming, we're Americans. We want to be on American soil. Well, guess what? 57 people not being allowed back on American soil when they have a deadly virus on their cruise ship. 
that probably would have been a good thing for all the millions of Americans over here who can't afford to go on cruises, who don't go to Italy and China. And what do you do in this situation? Why not just send American doctors, CDC officials, to the cruise ship? That's their job. They get paid to do that. Instead of bringing those 57 infected people into our country, and actually it was less than 57, I believe it was 14, that were actually infected. But what happened is once they got here, where we had no cases of coronavirus, now we have 57 because those people on that cruise ship came here. Some of them had no symptoms, just like with the AIDS virus. Remember? It lay dormant sometimes for years, which meant you didn't know you had it, so you could infect other people. That's why AIDS was so devastating. Because nobody knew they had it and they were infecting people. They didn't have symptoms, but they could infect people. Same thing with the coronavirus. So my, I submit to you, what is the big deal of inconveniencing 50, 14, 15, 16, even 100 people on a cruise ship, American citizens? Inconvenience them for even a month and not let them back here until they are 100% healthy in order to keep millions of innocent American men, women, and children safe from this virus in order to keep it out of our country. We managed to do it with Ebola. We got ahead of that. I'm not sure we can get ahead of this virus. Now, Donald Trump's going to tell us tonight, all is well. We're getting ahead of it. Well, I don't know about that. Because, see, in all the books I've read, and I know they were fiction, most of them, but the government doesn't tell you everything because they don't want you to panic. Imagine if the government came out and said, oh, my God, this is going to be really bad. Schools are going to be closed. Businesses are going to shut down. We're not going to be able to get stuff at the grocery store. Think about how that would start. The grocery stores would be inundated with people like, you know, in our town when there's even an inch of snow predicted, all the milk and bread and eggs are off the shelves, this would be 10,000 times worse. People would panic. But I will tell you this. The president's going to say things are great, but let's look at the stock market. Let's look at some of the scary things that I learned that I didn't know. For example, I did not know that while, yes, we're working on a vaccine, we're working on a treatment, that the pharmaceutical industry in America actually buys the ingredients to make their overpriced pharmaceutical products from China. Now, that's kind of interesting to me. Because, you know, in China, they might pay a worker 15 cents a day or 15 cents an hour to make an ingredient. And then the pharmaceutical companies here buy that ingredient put it into a drug, and then charge $5,000 for one dose. I didn't know that. That we get our ingredients for pharmaceutical drugs in China. No way to make them here, really. We got millions of Americans who either refuse to work or can't find a job. You'd think maybe they could figure out how to be trained if someone can do it for 15 cents a day in China, that maybe we could train some American people, give them some free daycare for their children, get them off welfare, and give them a job making the ingredients to make pharmaceutical drugs in this country. A hospital gowns, masks, we're going to have a short supply of those. Why? They're made in China. They're made in China. Of course they are. Because what American citizen can learn how to make a hospital mask or a hospital gown for our medical community? I say I could probably learn how to do it if someone taught me. Doesn't look like it's all that hard. Now, of course, we can't pay 15 cents a day because we are a democracy. We are a capitalist country. People don't go to work in our country for 15 cents an hour. 
which means, of course, the medical hospitals and the doctors, they're going to have to pay a little more for their gowns and masks. But you know what? At least they will have a supply of them, and they will be made by American citizens who are coronavirus-free in America. Hell, we ordered Chinese food the other night, and I actually thought about it. Because how do I know if someone in that restaurant making my Chinese food hasn't been to China recently? I mean, it's something we have to think about. Now, I'm not panicking, panicking. But I am going to tell you what I'm doing. And my husband's company, by the way, here in Little Lancaster, Pennsylvania, where unfortunately the one risk we have is we have a huge college right up the street from us, Franklin and Marshall College, that does have foreign exchange students from China. And they did have one person that was quarantined for a period. Luckily, they did not have the virus that I'm aware of. But again, would we know? Can we trust our government to tell us? Don't know. So I'm not panicking yet, but my husband's company did something really interesting about, well, when this thing first came out, actually, which I uh, applaud them for. They had a meeting. And they basically said, if you don't feel well, if you have a fever, if you're coughing, if you got the sn stay home and work from home. There will be no repercussions for that. Don't come to work. And that's another problem with Americans. We go to work sick because we're afraid, oh, the boss is going to be upset. The boss is going to think we're faking. Millions of Americans do not use, even if they get paid sick days, they don't use them. They are terrified to call in sick. Well, my friends, call in sick. Don't put other people at risk. Don't help spread. Start a pandemic in America. And I think right now, if you don't feel good and you tell your boss, you know, I don't know, haven't been to China or anything, but I don't know, I, I, I don't feel well. I think I'm going to just for safety, I'm going to stay home. Then do that. And I don't think your boss at this time right now is going to say you're fired of course that's illegal but most people again in america were afraid to call in sick and use our sick days just like we don't use our vacation days the olympic committee this is terrifying this is what really got me starting to be nervous that if this virus is not basically eradicated by the end of may the tokyo olympics are canceled that's a big deal the Summer Olympics will be canceled. That's huge. And that's when I started to be like, mm, I think I want to do a show about this and see where all you guys are at. Because a lot of my viewers, and people don't know this, especially my American viewers, that I do have viewers all over the world. So for some of you who are in other countries watching my show right now, I want to hear from you. And please translate to English. I speak very limited French and poco poco Spanish, but try to translate it so I can read what your comments are. I really want to hear uh, what you guys are thinking, because this virus is now not just a Chinese issue, it's not just a cruise ship issue. It's an Italian issue. It's a South Korean issue. Iran has it. Spain has it. And I guess what we should do is really rethink this open border thing, because right now in this situation, and I don't want anything to be taken advantage of, once this virus is contained or there's a cure for it or a vaccine for it, fine. Everything goes back to the way it was before. But what we really need to think about is closing our borders here in America. Anybody who is in Europe right now stays in Europe until they can prove they have no virus in them. We need a good test. They have to be able to prove they are 100% healthy before they are allowed back into this country because inconveniencing even several hundred, several thousand American citizens who have chosen to go out of our country and any time you choose to travel out of America to another country, you do put yourself at some risk. What you do not have the right to do because you want an adventure is to come home and put millions of innocent people whose idea of a vacation 
is five days at the Jersey Shore in the summer or a trip to Florida once a year or a trip to California. You don't have a right to put all of us in danger of a deadly virus. Because, see, we didn't get to have the fun adventure vacation. So we don't deserve the virus that came home with you from your great adventure vacation. Now, I might get some flack for saying that, but I don't care. Because you know what? The safety and health of millions of American citizens is more important than the inconvenience temporarily of a couple hundred or even a couple thousand Americans who have chosen to be world travelers. Some even traveling after we heard of this outbreak in China. And of course, this does bring us full circle. Can we trust our government? Well, history tells us no. On one hand, we have the CDC saying, prepare for severe disruptions to your daily life. Now, what does that mean? Does it mean we run to the grocery stores? Get the bread, the milk, the eggs, stock up on water, batteries. Is the power going to go out? What's going to happen? What is the definition of severe disruption to our daily lives? We already know we depend too much on foreign countries for certain products we depend on every day, like hospital masks and gowns, go figure, ingredients to make pharmaceutical drugs, probably even the ingredients needed to make a vaccine and a cure for this virus. We need China, and China's shut down. They're not making anything because everybody's quarantined. Everybody's staying home. Our stock market is falling like crazy. And it will continue to do so until somebody gets a hand on this virus. But we're not going to get ahead of it because it's already ahead of us. This is another warning for those of you who might want to support Bernie Sanders or any Democrat who believes that total government control of everything in our lives, from the power grid to your health care, is what America needs. <clears throat> when they say the wealthy are to blame for everything that ails anybody who is not wealthy, when they say people who live in big mansions should open those mansions up and take in homeless people, like they do in communist Russia. You're not allowed to have two people living in a 16-room house. you got to let poor people come in and live with you. Because, you know, you're not allowed to have nice things. Even though you earned them. You worked hard, you earned them. So we have to be very careful when we watch how a communist country handles an epidemic. And they can, might say it was a pandemic. You know what? Either way, people are dying. What's scary is we don't know how many people are dead in China because China won't tell us. They won't let reporters in. They kicked New York Times reporters out last week because they were snooping around. They won't let the CDC in. They won't let American doctors in to report on this situation. So for all we know, there are 20,000 people dead in China, 30,000, 100,000, who knows? Because we can't trust what they say. Now, of course, Bernie Sanders and some other Democrats want our country to be like that. Now, imagine a pandemic in America that starts in America under a socialist regime. Our internet will be cut off. Our Facebook feed will be cut off. Our YouTube, they'll just turn everything off so we can't say anything to the outside world and panic people. Imagine that. It could happen. Because that's what communism and socialism and a new a new term I I learned, Marxism, which I will talk about on a on a a show maybe next week. That's scary. When you think that that's kind of what some of the Democrats are trying to do here in America, that the government controls everything. And now let's talk real quick, the show's going long, but it's an important show, that the president has asked Congress for $2.5 billion to fight the, the coronavirus. And Congress has said, that's not enough money. Well, here's the problem, okay? 
First of all, they're going to say no to President Trump because they hate President Trump. So anything he asks for, as he said the other day, if I had asked for $10 billion, they would have said it was too much. Now they're saying $2.5 billion is too little. What you may not know is that Congress can allocate any amount of money. If the president asks for 2.5, they can give him 10 if they want to. All he has to do is sign off on it. But see, here's the problem. They hate this president so much that the Democrat-run House is refusing to look at this $2.5 billion expenditure to protect us. The people that pay their salary. So they're screwing Trump by refusing to give him the $2.5 billion, but what they're really doing is screwing us. They're not keeping us safe. They are slowing down the progress of getting a handle on this virus. We have the best researchers in the world. We have the National Institutes of Health. We have the CDC. They have researchers. But they need money, money, money to get a handle on this, this virus, to get its DNA, and to figure out how to kill it. It takes money to do this. And in this situation, where I am not a fan of big government, like Bernie Sanders is, where I go, I need the government to give me electricity, I need government to give me a college education, to give me food. No, I don't need the government for that shit. I can take care of that myself because, again, we work for a living in our home. But in this situation, we need our government. I can't go out or go down in my basement or up in my attic and make a vaccine for this virus. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> if I did, I'd be one of the 1% that Bernie wants to blame for everything that's wrong in this country. But we have people who are smart enough, educated enough, and able to do it. But they need money to do it. So for Congress to be holding this bill up that would give them $2.5 billion, which is a lot of money. And we already have private donors like Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos giving their own money to go toward research for this because that's what wealthy people do, the 1%. They realize how blessed they are to have money. So when something like this comes up, they give it away to help to protect all of us. That's why we kind of need billionaires in America for when something like this comes up and Congress is saying, well, we don't like the president. So if the president asks, and he doesn't say pretty, pretty, please, with a cherry on top. Uh, we're not giving him anything. So what if 57 Americans have the virus and it could go up? So what if schools close and the, Dow, the, the stock market drops even more and people lose their retirement, their savings, their interest rates, everything? They don't care. They just want to screw Trump. They like saying no to Donald Trump not understanding when they say no to Donald Trump in this situation, they're saying no to every innocent American man, woman, and child in this country. Love to hear your comments. I'm looking forward to watching the president's speech at six. And if it is warranted, I will do another show about this in the near future. So for now, on a very special Wednesday edition of Political Paula, I'm out.